Hey friends, just checking in to do a little, actually, let me turn this this way, I feel like that might be helpful, do a little sewing together. So this is the uh, raw edge quilt that I've been working on. As you can see, I used um, the machine on this and I um, did the... Where's my hand? <laughs> I just uh, put together uh, scraps from um, that uh, wonderful store, Swanson's Fabric, that just sells scraps. And I just laid them all out in a random pattern. I didn't piece them together or tuck the edges or anything. I just um, sewed them down. Here, there's my finger. With a zigzag stitch using the machine. Let's see if I can get it focused. There it is. Zigzag zag stitch. And now, and I had put a, um, an old sheet on the back. You can see the zigzag stitching. I really love how just wacky and unfinished it is. And now I'm sewing the edge down by just Turning up that back sheet around the edges, I folded it. Filming is very counterintuitive. <laughs> um, folding it twice over, and then I'm just doing a whip stitch to hold it down. So see if I can get this angled correctly. Yes. Okay. Let me turn this down just a little bit so that I could be a little bit more in front of myself. So I am glad that I did. I'm doing this for a friend who um, just welcomed her first grandbaby and I wanted to do it on the quicker side and um, so I used the machine, and I'm glad I tried that because it was fun to try out doing just this fun, wacky pattern, and I really like knowing that I could do that in the future um, quickly. But I really missed the um, hand-stitching part of it. I, I don't love um, the feeling of sewing with the machine as much as I do hand sewing, so I'm glad to be doing this edging with the hand sewing and have really been missing um, doing some of the little slow stitch collages while I've been focusing on this project and um, so I'm looking forward to getting back to some of that I have some ideas about doing like a bookmark with some slow stitching and then I also um, have been watching this show with my kiddo Called the Dragon Prince. Um, it has a longer name, but it's on Netflix. It's a kid's um, uh, cartoon, and it's actually really good. Um, but there, one of the main characters has this little um, book, like satchel that they wear. So it's just like a a little um, strap over their shoulder, and then it holds that has like a book carrier for the book. So I've been thinking that would be a fun thing to make out of uh, with some slow stitching scraps. So I think I might work on that. And I have been working on getting my Etsy shop set up. But honestly, the thing that has been holding me back has been, um, sorry, it's really confusing for me to stay in the area of the camera. If I can try. Am I in it now? Yeah. So, um, the thing that's been holding me back is I've made like eight more kits and I've done my first posting, but there's 10 pictures that you're supposed to fill on the Etsy platform for each posting. And that means I have to take the 10 pictures. They have to be 10 actually decent pictures which is hard for me for some reason the lighting and the pictures and the camera as you can see 
is a struggle for me. Um, so, let's see, maybe that's a little better. Um, so, it means I have to take all the pictures and then I have to email them to myself so that I can open them on the computer even though there is an Etsy seller app that I got on my phone, but when I open it, I can't find the place to like actually make a post. So I feel like it could be much easier than I'm making it, but I just can't figure it out. So that has stalled me a bit. Um, and maybe if I figured that out, then I can get back to it. The other thing is, um, I'd love to hear from other people who are trying to figure out how to start a Etsy shop or spend more time doing what you love. I find that I get, I put a bunch of energy in and then I get behind on my regular like nine to five work. And then I feel like I have to put more time towards that. And then I fall behind on this and it just gets a little bit confusing. <laughs> How to, well, I guess I, it's not confusing. It's, I obviously, I need to put money towards the work that I'm being paid for right now. Because that's important in terms of uh, taking care of my life. But I also feel then, like, bummed if, that I'm not getting to spend time on this. And a little guilty about the regular work when I'm not spending time on that. So, that's all of that. Um, but all in all, I am glad that I've been having these projects to be working on that I, this is the first time that I felt confident enough to make something actually for a friend. And that feels really good because even though this is far from like high quality, it's actually like pretty funky. I think it's actually very beautiful and um, it's really soft and cozy and I think the baby will love it and it was fun to make and I hope that my friend thinks it's special that I made it even though it's not very fancy and I think that's one of the main things that I would love for all of us to have more access to and that I hope that the um, kit spring is just this idea that you don't have to be fancy or very skilled to enjoy making something beautiful and to even just enjoy making something with your hands because I do think that that's there's something really special about that in this world where we make so many things on devices um, there is something really neat about making something with your hands and I know like, um, I feel like I do that when I do cooking, um, which is nice, but I also feel like it doesn't last the same way that something like a quilt or a little slow stitching would. So I would love to, you know, give people options and model how, um, you can still enjoy doing something creative without it having to be very fancy or accomplished. <laughs> I was thinking this morning when I was trying to thread the needle that my eyes are starting to not be that great up close for my whatever, up close vision, and I was thinking sometimes it feels like the thread almost finds the needle. So I just sort of keep putting it in the direction that it, <laughs> it should go, and it seems like it almost finds itself, which is kind of sweet to think of. All right, where are we at time-wise? Right around nine minutes, and I think a nice chunk for me is about 15 minutes. I know I've done some longer ones, like when I was really trying to um, finish up that little stitch, sewing, not stitch, the little needle book. 
that was fun. And I really was motivated to finish it. And so I think I did like 45 minutes. But um, I think I'll just do a few more minutes in with this. One thing that I tried to figure out from a YouTube video was how to hide the uh, knot when you're doing quilts. And I tried what they suggested and I, it didn't work. They said you should like wrap the um, thread around the needle like three times and then push it through and pull it through the fabric and that it would make a, well first they said it would make a knot and then you could pull it through the fabric. But when I did that, it didn't make a knot. Um, so I'll have to rewatch that YouTube um, and see what I'm doing differently than what they're doing. Um, and so on this one, I just went ahead and made all the knots visible because it's sort of part of the vibe that works with it. Um, but I have the quilt that I... I'm making that's the same fabric of the one that my grandma had started for me before she passed away. And um, I was hoping to like make that one be a little bit more, um, not fancy, but you know, like a little bit more, I was going to try to make that not have knots. And I don't know, maybe it would be good for me to just go ahead and let it have knots and let it go. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'll try to figure it out. That is what kept me from working on that quilt for all those years when I had the original one that she had was that I was scared to do it wrong. So maybe letting the knot show would be part of me just going for it and letting it be, letting wrong be okay. I heard today something about someone having what's called pure OCD and they called it that they were in recovery from pure O OCD where it's just the obsessive and no compulsive behaviors. I had never heard of that before, but they said that it was like being in recovery from perfectionism and I thought, well, I don't know. I don't know. If mine counts as obsessive, but I certainly have struggled with perfectionism my whole life. And this whole slow stitching project seems like a really tangible way to do something that's specifically about not being perfect, which has been really nice. All right. So down here, I did a, speaking of not perfect, I on accident um, caught the edge of the sheet in the stitching. So I couldn't pull this one up and around. So I just cut it down and I'm going to get a little piece of some scrap of something and just patch over that. These are things I never would have done before. I definitely would have just not, I probably would have just not done the whole project in the first place, but if I had done the project and I had made that kind of mistake, I would have taken the time to take all of that out and fix it. So I'm making progress. And what do they say? Progress, not perfection, right? And who knows? I'm only, actually, in three days I'm turning 43, so I'm I'm only 42, and maybe in another 40 years I'll have <laughs> really let go of some of these worries about doing things right, or doing them well, or doing them in a certain time frame. We shall see. All right, friends, I am going to go ahead and let you go. Thanks for being with me, and I hope you have a beautiful day or night, whatever you're doing, and that you give yourself 
little quiet time to do something nice and beautiful or even if you don't have that opportunity that you give yourself some time to watch somebody else do something beautiful. Okay, lots of love.